Hello, so this is this Q&A video that I promised you for Thursday the 30th of January 2014. I'm going to start off with some of the heavy questions and then hopefully move on to the light questions. So the first and probably heaviest question that I was asked was, um, I was wondering if you had any advice on how to move on from sexual abuse. Now, this question I think really deserves an entire video about it. I don't think that me just saying quickly in a Q&A video, my advice could probably work. But the three things I probably think are most important is number one, absolutely do not blame yourself. Um, even if you feel like you were the one that started it, abuse is abuse. Number two, try to tell somebody and when I say tell somebody, I mean that means either after um, and it's the past and everything. If you, if it still bothers you, then tell someone it bothers you. Number three, always be honest about it. Uh, don't try and lie, don't try and change it. Do you take any psych medication? Uh, what are your experiences with meds? So, no I don't. I only take multivitamins, but I used to be on a huge amount of meds. Um, when I was sectioned, I was forced onto a large amount of meds. First of all, they forced me onto olanzapine, which is an antipsychotic. And then when they were tube feeding me, because there was a lot of problems trying to get it in me and also trying to keep it in me, they would sedate me very heavily with either injections of midazolam, huge amounts of levomeprazine, uh, phenigan, lorazepam and diazepam, as well as olanzapine. So all of this mixed together and I was on a huge amount of levomeprazine. It meant that I was very, very heavily sedated pretty much all of the time. It didn't stop me from doing what I was doing but because I was so scared of the fact that I was asleep all the time and I couldn't even walk down the corridor without people uh, holding me, I, I started to eat again and I let them tube feed me. That doesn't mean to say that all of um, medication experiences would be like this. I do think that meds can be good, but because I was actually rejecting them and I didn't want them, they of course weren't going to work because I think you need to want them to work for them to work. Who was the first friend that I told about my self-harm and how did they react? I've never actually told someone about my self-harm, but the first friend to find out, she was very, very, very angry. She uh, wasn't really considerate and um, she got really annoyed with me. She stopped being my friend. The actual hatred between us ended because I always had to go to her house after school until my dad was out of work to pick me up and take me back. So we had to be around each other and in the end she threw a cup of coffee over me, tea. Then we became friends again because she had to say sorry. Now this person says, every time I feel myself going off to sleep, I suddenly jump as if I'm falling and I wake up feeling really scared and anxious. Have you ever had anything like this? This is actually um, something that's very, very common and extremely well known and you only have to search it into Google, there is actually a word for it, I don't know what the word for it is. For me, I actually have it a few times every time I go to sleep and um, sometimes an image can come into my head beforehand or sometimes I just suddenly feel like I am falling and sometimes it's like a distressing thing but I sort of jump awake and then it's like, I'm alert. What's your favourite TV programme, book, film, animal, music artist? So my favourite TV programme, the only programme that I actually watch on the television is Hollyoaks, I'm sorry, don't hate me. My favourite TV programme I actually watch online and it's probably The Mentalist or How I Met Your Mother. My favourite book is um, Wonder by RJ Palacio, it's about facial disfigurement. My favourite film, it usually is something that I've watched recently, it changes all the time. At the moment it's How I Live Now, I think it's an amazing film. My favourite animal? Are you kidding me? I'm oh, sorry. I've got pets, I've got a budgie, I've got a rat and I've got a cat at home and those are my favourite animals because those are mine and I love them. I don't really have a favourite musical artist. It changes all the time. Do you find blogging therapeutic? Are there downsides? Blogging isn't of course my vlog, it's my, um, it's my blog on Tumblr and I find it really helpful. It's really nice that people can talk back to you and it's really nice that people reblog what you say and it means that people are listening, think it's helpful, and then spread it on to others, which is really nice. Are there downsides? Of course there's downsides. If you're writing about yourself, then you might be triggering people, particularly if you have like an inspirational um, blog, or you're known to help people, then sometimes when you're struggling, you might find that as your um, output. And so people might get triggered by that and get upset by it. Along with this, someone close to you might find out that you don't want them to find out and find it, and um, be upset by what they see. So I think that's all the questions. I also wanted to cover something. There's a little triangle here. Um, hey. Hello. Okay, one minute. Okay. See, I'm wearing a little triangle here that I also wanted to talk about. Uh, it's a sort of lush campaign um, joined together with something called 
sign of love. Search it into Google, sign of love, all one word, or maybe hashtag sign of love, all one word. It's really good. It's about equality and love and um, gay rights and gay marriage and things. And it's the fact that in Russia right now, there are actually laws saying that people can't sort of show untraditional sort of affections towards each other, untraditional, of course, meaning same sex. And um, that's really sad and it's really bad and everybody's doing this. And what you do is you put a little triangle on yourself, you take a picture of yourself and you put it on Twitter with the hashtag sign of love. Uh, you can also put it on Instagram and Facebook and I also put it on Tumblr. So that's what that is. On Sunday hopefully there will be a next video about self-harm, though I haven't even planned what it'll be about yet, it will be about self-harm. So if you like this video, even though it's not like my normal traditional videos, uh, it is a little bit of me and maybe what I talk about, so please do subscribe below. Also if you have something to say, any views or anything, please leave a comment. And finally if you think I need one, give me a thumbs up. But most of all, please, please stay strong, keep going and just be yourself and I love you. Okay.